Power Rangers was one of the biggest things as I was growing up, and I absolutely bought into the hype. I had the toys, I watched it on Saturday mornings on Fox, I was even a part of the fan club, man. Most importantly though, I had the video games. As a kid, I never actually owned the original Minecraft Power Rangers video game, but I get to play it from a bunch of friends. What I did own, however, was the one based on the movie. And if you're up and up on the world of pop culture, you'll know that this weekend, the big budget Hollywood reboot of the Power Rangers franchise is coming out. And I figured what a hell of a time to talk about these games right now. I mean, my generation and the generation after me are generally pretty hyped, regardless of what your personal opinion is. So this seems like the perfect time to cover these babies. Now, I remember the hype for the first time we got a Power Rangers movie back in 1995. It was the first time they'd ever done something as a US production exclusively. It didn't repurpose anything from its Japanese origins. However, what happened was a mess of a movie with crazy production issues that we do not have time to get into, but you should check out. But all the same, it had a cheesy charm, it felt like the show just blown up, and Ivan Ooze was a pretty good villain if you were into that cheesy kind of thing. So, with the new movie coming out this weekend, and the fact that I figured I'd try something simple to get me back in the swing of things since it's been months since I've done a new video, let's take a look at the video game adaptation of the first attempt at a Power Rangers movie. Compared to the original game on the Sega Genesis, a very lousy traditional tournament style versus fighter, I mean there's no walls, the stages just keep going on and on when you hit your enemies, it's, it's just bad, it's real bad. The movie took the beat-em-up route that was easy to slap together for a licensed property of any sort. Both of these games were developed by Banpresto, who were the actual developers of the semi-popular, mainly in Japan, puzzle game Penga for Sega, as well as a few other games under the name Coreland. They would later become renowned for their crazy mecha crossover strategy RPG and the inevitable spin-offs that came with it, Super Robot Wars. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, The Game, starts normal enough. A quick text crawl catches you up on the plot of the movie going into the beginning, and throws you right into the action after selecting any one of the six rangers to play as. None of the rangers play any differently really, just a unique weapon is used to combo strings and they have a different sprite. Getting into it, the game feels pretty good to play, which isn't always the case with the beat em up. Combat is fluid, feels good to beat up on things, it feels punchy, the game runs without any slowdown or frame rate issues, and it all just gels together pretty goddamn well. However, as you'll quickly notice in this first stage, you beat up the same enemy type for the entire stage. Yup, one enemy type, the Henchling Oozmen, for the entire level. Sadly, this is a big flaw that truly shines through when you get farther into the game's six stages. You'll end the first stage anticlimactically with no boss battle or anything, just getting owned by Ivan Ooze, though hey, that's what happens in the movie, it's all good at storytelling. However, what happens next is, over a two minute cutscene, the game explains a HUGE chunk of the movie, including one huge part where you go to a ninja training island. You know, the one in the movie with the gargoyles and stuff that could totally work as its own level. So at this point, you are closing in on the finale of the movie, and it's stage two. Stage 2, in my opinion, kills the pace of the game, since it's one of the longest levels and involves you beating up more Oozmen. A lot of Oozmen. Sure, you have to dodge cars now, but that isn't adding a whole lot. And it feels like it takes forever and ever. Once you get through it though, you are greeted to the first boss battle of the game and get to jump in a Megazord, which is awesome! The Megazord fight, while not anything incredible, or at least a change of pace, but they don't really do anything with this scale of things outside of the graphics. It still follows the movie, fighting the two different ectomorphicons that Ivan resurrects, because I rewatched the movie for this review and I'll be damned if I don't get some mileage out of it. It's now when, confusingly, if not by necessity, the game decides to veer away from the movie since that would make a very short game, but actually jump into the Season 2 arc in which they transition from the original Yellow, Black, and Red Rangers to the new ones that are actually in the movie. Thankfully, this allows for some variety, as you'll now be facing the well-known cannon fodder, the Putty Patrol, but also get randomly attacked by Nimrod the Scarlet Sentinel and her minions AC and DC, 
but for some reason they are referred to in the game by their names from the original Sentai series in which the footage was repurposed for the season of Power Rangers. So look cool with that nugget of trivia the next time you're with the cool kids. The setup is cool, and the final part in which you need to take on all three of the S-Sentinels at once is a cool moment, and leads straight into a Megazord boss battle with the three of them. One thing of cool note, unlike choosing between the six different rangers, if you choose the White Ranger Zord for a boss fight, you get a chiptune version of the White Ranger Tiger Power song as opposed to the normal Power Rangers theme. It's a nice touch, but it's not any different outside of that. Level 4 brings you into a cavern to face off against more putties. However, you are actually looking for a specific cave, hiding behind breakable boulders in the level. In one of them, you'll find Lord Zed waiting to take you out. For as epic as it looks and feels, the boss is actually an absolute cavewalk. Just smack the hand a whole bunch, don't get hit by the fireballs, and you'll be set to go. Once you make it back out and beat up more putties, you'll get to face fan favorite Goldar. Once you beat him in Ranger form, it's time to take him out in the Zord. Again, it's another Zord boss battle, nothing special or new. Going right from the cave to the next episode part in Stage 5, you jump to Zordon's trial for the new Rangers, and you go to find the Sword of Light in order to do the power transfer. The most interesting level visually, the burning city that looks almost Roman in nature as you go along, it starts with a round 2 boss against Goldar right from the get-go, and then leads into more disposable putty fodder. However, after making your way through the leveled city, you arrive at the statue holding the sword. Beat it to pieces, and he man the power all the way back to the present, in which you realize Ivanus is currently about to beat your ass, and you should probably take care of that. Enter the sixth and final stage, which is really just a two-part boss battle. The two parts are not really any different, just mainly following the movie, in which the first half of the battle against Ivan and his really big mech starts in Angel City, but then later moves to space. As usual, beat on Ivan's combined Ectomorphicon until you beat him once, fly into space, and then lather, rinse, repeat. And then you get your final cutscene and watch Ivan get obliterated, and are even treated to an ending cutscene with the best characters from the show, Skull and Bulk, along with their awesome tune done in 16-bit glory. The fact is, the game isn't anything special, but honestly, with a little bit better pacing, maybe more levels based on the movie, slightly shorter stages, a little more depth to the combat, and a bit more difficulty, since the game is kind of a cakewalk, this would be a pretty good beat-em-up. As is, it's a fun distraction, with a surprisingly great soundtrack, some good-looking levels, fluid if simple gameplay, and of course it offers that beautiful two-player co-op that beat-em-ups are so good to have for. Now, all that being said about this, this isn't actually the end of our journey. No, 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 no. There is one other game based on this movie that we gotta talk about, and that's the Game Gear version. Now, shockingly, this is not just a downgraded version of the Genesis game, oh no. This is an entirely different beast, and in fact, it's one of my favorite games on the system. And here's why. Unlike its Genesis counterparts, the two Power Ranger games are almost identical in nature, running off the exact same engine. Again, the first game was based on the TV show, and one is based on the movie, which is the one we're going to be looking at. The games are both odd little beasts. They are both a traditional one-on-one -on -one fighter, but also have a bit of beat-em-up elements to them. Each level breaks down in this way. Every enemy encounter is one-on-one, -on -one, but between, before, or even with no boss, you'll take on grunts with much lower health during the stage as well. Even more, it controls more like a traditional fighter than a beat-em-up, with normal quarter circle special moves, combos, and proper high and low blocking. Hell, when they made the sequel for the movie, they even added a meter that works kind of like Street Fighter IV's meter where you can use it to make EX style super moves. It's a unique beast, and a really fun one at that. Much like its Genesis counterpart, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie The Game does not only cover the movie, but content from the second season of the show. Unlike its 16-bit brother though, this version makes no attempt to connect the plot, instead having the first three matches just be against random baddies that Lord Zed sends out at you. Each fight has a slightly unique feel. The first fight in which you start against the boss, fight some putties, then fight the boss again, only to jump in a Megazord and get to really smash him around. The second fight you play against Goldar starts with the putties, but soon Goldar starts swinging in terrorizing you as more goons continue to spawn. Eventually, he'll decide you are worth his time, and come out from hiding. Finally, the third stage has a traditional minions first, boss last setup. 
During these first few levels, if you play around with different characters, as you can once again choose from any of the six rangers via a cute character select screen, you'll notice that each has a very unique style and moveset specific to them, much more so than the Genesis beat-em-up. Once you finish these three stages, the story of the movie kicks in, but it's just as rushed and glossed over in this as it was in the Genesis game. In Stage 4, you fight only Oozmen, and you fight quite a few of them, until Ivan shows up and once again owns you without even trying. However, due to the greater challenge and faster gameplay, it doesn't feel nearly as worn out as it does in the Genesis. The challenge comes from your health. You have a limited supply of continues, and each stage you only get one life, one shot. Each enemy you defeat gives you some health back, the amount given is based on how strong the enemy you defeat is. If a specific generic enemy overwhelms you a bit, it can really hamper your life going into the boss fights. After this fight, both Stage 5 and 6 are exclusively using the Zords, fighting the same Ectomorphions and sequences from the last stage of the Genesis game. Yes, much of the story and movie is basically skimmed over in a text scroll, and a perfectly good fight sequence on that ninja planet never occurs in any of the Sega games. That said, these fights, much like everything before it, follow the end of the movie well and are just as enjoyable and give just enough of a challenge so you won't be able to just button mash your way through it. Though, as you may see through this video, the dive kick is OP. Of course. Looking back at these games just made me remind me why I like them so much. And yeah, sure, at this point I realize that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Genesis is not one of the best beat-em-ups ever, but for some reason I keep coming back to it, more often than most other beat-em-ups on the system. Like the Punisher, the Punisher's a great beat-em-up, but I've only played it once or twice, yet I'll play this at least once a year. But it's because I love it, because it reminds me of a simpler time. When people tell me that, oh, you just got nostalgia goggles on, what's wrong with that? If something's making you that happy to look back and reminisce, even if you can admit or not admit that it's not as good as you remembered it, what's wrong with that? So what if you got nostalgia goggles on? Is it making you happy? Then go back and enjoy it. That's how I feel about these kind of things anyways, and that's what playing this game reminded me of, and playing this game showed me the way to how good these games actually are. I would have never played this if I didn't have the attachment I had to this one. It just goes to show you never know what you'll be able to find out there. But more importantly, no matter what ends up happening with this new movie or whatever, even if you think it ruined your childhood memories, you didn't. Go back and watch the old movie. The old movie sucks. But I still like watching it every once in a while, because it reminds me of that time I was at the drive-in with my cousin seeing it for the first time and couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought the CGI and that was amazing. It's not, if you need to be asked. But at the end of the day, what I say is, if it makes you happy, that's what matters. Nothing else. Unless it's getting other people hurt. Don't hurt other people, even if it makes you happy. This is getting sidetracked and very weird. But anyways, as always, thank you so much guys for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Hi there guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's so good to be back doing videos again. Uh, I'm going to keep this one short and simple. If you're new or you haven't watched stuff in a while, there's a couple videos you can check out. Uh, if you have been just waiting on bated breath, don't worry. I already have some videos basically done, ready to go. And I'll hope to see you guys back here again real soon. But really, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, for everyone who's watching this, thanks for sticking with me, and thanks for watching.